When you want to integrate some LLM functionality into our app, we have many different options to choose from. We can go with GPT, Gemini, Claude, or maybe even some open source model from Hugging Face. But all this choice raises a question. How do we evaluate all these different solutions? This is the topic of today's video. I think it's best to think about this problem in the context of some specific task. So what we are going to do here is that uh, we will try to use an LLM to analyze HTML of some web page and then extract or suggest a title for this HTML. But we won't be satisfied with just any title. We want the title to reflect the state of the web page in detail. For example, here is the Hacker News authentication page. Big of UI design, if you ask me. I've tried to log in, but I used incorrect credentials. And now the website says bad login. So a title that I would like to see is something like authentication page, forms empty, bad login error. So here is the prompt template that we will be using. Feel free to post if you want to explore it longer. But we will also be using a function call here to get the title in an easy to parse JSON object. As you can see here, this function has two arguments. First, reasoning why a given title was chosen and then the title itself. Let's say we want to evaluate three different models on how well they can generate the titles that we want. GPT 3.5, GPT for Omni and Cloud3 Sonnet. To access these three models, we first need to install the OpenAI and Anthropic Python libraries. In this case, I am going to use Rai to manage my dependencies. Now, let's define two helper functions for generating the title using OpenAI and Entropic. Both of these functions will take the HTML and uh, the model name as uh, the arguments, and they will return the generated title as a string. They will also contain some very basic error handling, but otherwise, all that these functions will do is that they simply make the appropriate API call and then parse the results. So I've already prepared these two functions in a separate file, so I'll just paste them here. And we can see that we need to uh, make a few imports. Let's try to use both these functions on a simple example, just to verify that they actually work as expected. So, we have two functions for generating the website title using different models, but we are not performing any evaluation yet. And this is actually a pretty interesting question. How can we objectively compare the results of these two models? Well, there are many different solutions to this problem, and the one that we are going to use here is rather simple. If I open the sidebar here, you can see that I've created a small dataset of a few uh, HTML codes uh, 
most of these are different subpages of the Hacker News portal. And I've also created this title expected file, which contains the ideal titles, the titles that uh, I would like uh, one of the LLMs that we are testing to generate. What we can now do with this data is that we can calculate the similarity between the expected title from this file and the title that was generated by one of our LLMs. To do this, we first need to transform uh, the titles into their embeddings. Embeddings, very simply put, are a numerical representation of our titles. And once we have those, we can then calculate cosine similarity of these two embeddings. OpenAI offers an embedding endpoint, so we are going to use that. We are not going to invent the wheel here. What I'm going to do now is that I will add a new function to my file here that will basically iterate over all the HTML codes in our small dataset and generate a title for each one of them. As you can see, this function takes uh, one argument. The argument is uh, some sort of a callable evaluation function. And we expect this function to take a string argument, which will be the HTML of the web page whose title we want to generate. And it outputs another string. In this case, it will be the generated title. And as you can see, what we are also doing here is that we are truncating the HTML to first 15,000 characters, basically just to avoid uh, errors that are related to exceeding the context window of a given LLM. Let's call this function inside uh, our main function here, just to verify that it works as expected. And we of course need to uh, import the functools library here. And now to the actual similarity part. So let's first define a function that takes two titles as its arguments and calculates their similarity. As we can see here, we are using uh, the NumPy package. So we have to install it and then import it into our script. After generating a title here inside our evaluate function, we will now use this cosine similarity function to actually calculate the similarity between the generated title and the expected title. Then when we have the similarity, we can simply print it for now. In case there is an error, we set similarity to zero. Finally, let's calculate the average similarity across all websites in our dataset.
this is quite nice. We already have uh, some metric that we can use to make meaningful comparisons between different solutions to our problem. But what if we wanted something more visual, not just the number that we see here? Well, let me introduce you to MLflow. This open source MLOps tool is ideal for what we are doing here. Among many other things, it actually allows us to create and track different experiments using different configurations, different parameters, and compare the results. We can install MLflow as a Python package. We also need to add setup tools here. Otherwise, uh, we would get some module not found errors when we actually try to run MLflow. Now we can start a local MLflow server. If we now open the web interface running at port 5000, we can see that it is quite empty. Let's change that. In our Python script, we first set the MLflow URL and then we set the title of our experiment. Now we can use a context manager to start a new run. The first thing that we will do inside each run is that we log the parameters of our model. In our case, the two most important parameters are the name of the model we are using and the prompt. Now we run our evaluation function just as before. Inside our evaluate function, we can now start logging the mean similarity, the metric we are actually interested in. We will just call it similarity here. And just to avoid uh, the type error here, we just retype it into float. Now I will just open a new tab here and run our script again. We can now refresh the UI and we see our new title experiment here. If we click it, we see the run that we just performed. After clicking on the run, we can see all the different parameters and metrics associated with it. In this case, we see that the similarity was about 0.49. Now let's modify our script to also run the GPT-4 Omni model and Claw3 Sonnet. Let's add some print statements here so we know what the script is currently doing.
After the script is done executing, we can go back to the MLflow UI and see all our three runs here. Just as before, we can click on any run and see the details. What we can also do is go to the chart tab here and we can see a nice visual representation of the results. At the moment, we don't know which run corresponds to which model, but what we can do is group the runs by model. And now we see that GPT-4 Omni is doing quite well. Of course, we can lock more than one metric at a time. So let's add response time and run our script again. We can now see a new time chart in the MLflow UI. And as we can observe, the GPT models dominate Claude pretty heavily. There is one more thing I want to show you here. Let's modify our evaluate function to create a pandas data frame that contains all the information that we are gathering here. That is the expected title, the generated title, similarity, and response time. One of the features that MLflow offers here is that we can actually log the entire data frame. In MLflow, we can now click on one of the latest runs and in the artifacts tab, we can explore the results. We can, for example, sort the results by similarity to see with which titles is the given model struggling the most. But what might be even more interesting is that now in the list of runs, we can click the evaluation tab. And what we see here is an actual side-by-side comparison of outputs across all the different models that we have tried. Instead of comparing the generated titles directly, we can also switch to similarity and compare similarity. And that's it. In this video, I've shown you how you can use similarity to evaluate LLMs and how you can use MLflow to track experiments and compare different LLM solutions. All the MLflow features I've shown you today can also be used in combination with other types of machine learning models. They are not exclusive to LLMs. But MLflow itself also offers some features that are tailored specifically for LLMs. And this is what I will be talking about in future videos. So stay tuned.